Systems architecture is a vitally important aspect of systems design. So what is systems architecture? Fundamentally, it is the pattern made by all of the subsystems and their interconnections. The cube in the diagram is formed from corner points or vertices, interconnected along the outside edges to nearest neighbours. If you observe the corner points on their own, bottom left, there is no obvious pattern, no architecture. Observe instead the interconnecting lines on their own, bottom right. And you do see the architecture, the pattern, even with the corner points missing. For whole systems, comprised as they are of interacting subsystems, they should tell us that systems architecture is largely determined not just by the subsystems from which the whole system is formed, but also from the interconnections and interactions between them. Systems are more about function, behaviour and performance than about form and physical structure. Although system functional architectures will invariably be mapped onto physical structures, which are then expected to support and enable functional behaviour, performance and, of course, emergence in context. We should perhaps call this functionally mapped result functional physical architecture, to remind ourselves that physical structures exist to enable, support and protect functional performance and behaviour in context. Systems architecture is also concerned then with system viability or synergy, maintenance, evolution, survivability and homeostasis or dynamic equilibrium. We can interrelate these many aspects in this interpretive structural model. Starting at the bottom, systems architecture is a repository of information about itself and its fitness, a framework for adaptation, evolution and self-maintenance, a framework too for overall system cohesion. It is reconfigurable to overcome internal failures, availability, and external threats, security and survivability. To provide the essential linkages for cooperation, coordination and control and of course protection too. And at the top the ultimate purpose is to support a system's mission. So like a civil counterpart, the systems architect has quite a lot on his plate. All of which tells us what systems architecture has to achieve but not how it might be designed or evolved to perform these many functions and to achieve these many abilities. Different architectures, however, form characteristic patterns, so we can envisage a, a star-connected architecture. Multiprocessors might be arranged like this. Or there is a pipeline architecture where energy, information and substance pass through a series of processes. The human alimentary canal presents a pipeline architecture to our food. Then there is the circular pipeline, which is like a pipeline except that the outflow connects back into the inflow. The criminal justice system shown here presents a circular pipeline to criminal recidivists who, upon finishing their time, offend again and re-enter the system. So it's a leaky circular pipeline. Not all criminals are repeat offenders. At an even more fundamental level, systems architecture exhibits clusters and links. These may present as bound and coupled clusters. The diagram shows two tightly functionally bound clusters at top and bottom. The bottom clusters are, however, loosely coupled, while those at the top are more tightly coupled, which may lead to non-linear behaviour, even chaos. Another way of looking at coupling and binding is to envisage the architecture as layered. Harlech Castle here is shown overlaid with numbers, showing the various layers of defence to present would-be attackers with a succession of hurdles to be overcome. Similar architectures with surprisingly similar numbers of layers are found in security systems, military defences, ISO open systems interconnection protocols, 
and many, many more. Then there are dynamic systems architectures, such as we might see in network-enabled warfare, or in team games like American football, uh, rugby, and soccer. How can soccer have systems architecture? Well, we may see the team as a layered architecture of forwards, midfielders, and defenders. Soccer architectures are described as 4-2-4, for example, meaning four forwards, two midfielders, and four defenders. A 5-3-2 configuration would be more attacking, while a 2-4-4 would be more defensive. Using the soccer analogy, we can see that systems architecture can embody a strategy to achieve a mission, may be rigid or fluid, may adapt a situation to face opposition, and so on. Ultimately, then, systems architecture is about configuring, sustaining, and evolving systems operational performance in context, where the context may include threats, competition, and opposition. Can you design the ideal architecture? Well, it's not easy. There are so many competing objectives to consider. One way is to use a genetic methods in dynamic simulation to evolve progressively better and better architectures until an optimum solution can be found in various contexts. Not easy, not straightforward, not for the faint-hearted, but essentially doable, and the rewards are potentially great.